Somebody shout. One Jesus. One Jesus. One body of Christ. One body of Christ. One mandate. One mandate. Wonderful viewers. Jesus is coming is imminent. God's final move of the Holy Spirit is here. This move, according to the scriptures, will cause a massive harvest of souls into the kingdom of Christ and unite the body of Christ in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus to live as icons of Christ. Glory to God. The final global movement brings you teachers that will position you to be an amazing success in life and relevant in God's kingdom as we get set for the rapture. Final global movement. One Jesus, one body of Christ, one body. Final global movement. Be the church. Let me be my church. Let us unite in our faith and our knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Bible is not a textbook like chemistry textbook. It's a spirit. There are no controversies. Righteousness is defined by God. What he says you are is what you are. There's no teaching in the scriptures that will be left on top. Precept upon precept, line upon line, truth upon truth. This is the NCC Hat with Dr. David Binden. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a great day this day is to once again come your way with the confidence of sharing with you the truth of God's word. That will make you what he talks about. Life is much better and greater than what humanity has experienced. Just because many have not known the truth of God's word. That's why God has sent us your way on the Good Life Devotion to bring you these nuggets of truth to make you who you should be. This is your favorite Good Life Devotion, Center for Biblical Authority Teachings. We have been having the NCC Hub, in which we bring you highlights of previous new creation conferences, and by the Spirit we expansiate on them to allow life and spirit to penetrate into your heart along the lines of the truth shared. Today we are going to do something like that and the grace of God is going to be much more than previous because the, the, the path of a just man is a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So get ready to receive much more today. Now just before we start, I want to remind you of refreshing times, a special service that the Holy Spirit himself has orchestrated to teach the whole world concerning himself and uh, the sons of God, to know him as their father and to work with him. The reason why the church hasn't matured the way it should have is because the father of the church has been relegated to the background. This service comes to you every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. You can be in the studio at GLC2 or just join online on our YouTube channel. And I'm excited to let you know that in exactly two weeks from today, the New Christian Conference 2020 is coming in Ghana National Theatre, Accra. You just can't miss it. This is God's place to groom his church. It's a global conference, and it's for the body of Christ. If you have heard us, you must be there. Make every arrangement to be there. Now, the portals are open for registration. Do register. If you are not used to internet, call the numbers. The reason why we need your registration is to prepare for your coming. I get in there. And so apart from that, this year's New Creation Conference is special because God has something unique for ministers of the gospel. So we are all going to be in the New Creation Conference on Thursday and on Friday evenings, but ministers will have the opportunity of having another session on Friday morning. And if you're a minister and you want to be part of it, make sure you register. That particular session will be on registration basis because we need to know you are coming and prepare for your coming. So make sure you register and be part of the Christian Conference 2020. Hallelujah. Good. So we are going to go back into the National Theater as it was last year, 2019, and watch an exit. And right after that, I will return to introduce to you my guest, and we shall go on with the discussion. Let's watch this. Are you ready? And it's the third thing. <laughs> Is that it's going to establish us in the reality of this new Christian message. The reality. The reality. Let's look at something in Luke chapter 1 from verse 1. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1. We'll go all the way to verse 4. 
Luke chapter 1 verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, verse 4, let's do verse 4 together, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou have been instructed. He says, I'm writing to you that you will know the certainty of the things that they have taught you. If you, the word know there is epigenosco, to have thorough knowledge, absolute knowledge of the certainty. How certain, how firm, how secure, how safe is this message? So over these two days, the Holy Ghost through the scriptures and the ministry of his personality wants to impress on us the reality of this new creation message. And it is very important because some people hear this message even though we prove it to them from the scriptures it still looks strange to them. Of course the Bible says in Hebrews that we shouldn't get carried away with strange teachings. But a teaching is strange if it is from outside. It's foreign. Not when it is based on the scriptures. So it still looks strange to them because they don't have the reality. Then there are those who hear the message. They get excited. But their present conditions are so far away from the realities. That from time to time they sit back and begin to ask certain questions. Are these things really true? Are we not going too far? Especially when they hear us say, we are God because we are born of God. Are we not going too far? If these things were really so, how come that over all these years, all these well-formed institutions did not teach them? So these questions begin to arise. And it is because they, they don't have the reality they have not come to know the certainty. You must know that this message is safe. It is secure. It is firm. If not, you can get excited and situations in life will let you be questioning it. But that's not what I'm doing. This is my life. <laughs> yeah, what we are teaching is not a calculated attempt to cast a slur on what other people are teaching. No. It's not a cunning way of gaining cheap popularity by sounding different. No. These are time-tested facts in the scriptures. The only thing which you still understand is that the time for their, their speech wasn't yet up. That's why they were kept. But this is the time. This is the message that is required to build the body of Christ for the coming of Jesus. It is not one of the messages, brothers and sisters. It is the message. It is the message. It is the message. So, God will make you understand this year that, you know, that this is why it is very important that if you are here, you should listen to receive. Don't listen as though, okay, I've heard of a new Christian conference and I came, so I'm just listening to see, okay. Some people label themselves, we are deliverance preachers, we are law preachers, we are grace preachers, we are... Labeling is not good. Ministry and uh, uh, church labeling, they are not biblical. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 3 all the way to about 9, there were these kind of labelings. Some said, I belong to Paul. Some said, Apollos. Others said, Peter. Then Paul said, did Jesus, uh, Peter die for you? Did Paul die for you? He said, we are just ministers. One planted, one watered. But the Lord gave the increase. We are laborers together with Christ. Hallelujah. So in verse 4, 
chapter 4, verse 1, it says, let a man account of us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Paul is nothing, in quote. Peter is nothing, in quote. So, uh, Apollos is nothing, in quote. So, you can't label, lab, that labeling is not good. It brings division in the body of Christ. So, someone can come into this conference and say, oh, me, I preached this message, but I just came to listen to that message. So, when you are like that, you'll be listening against your background. Instead of listening to receive, you, you, the message is rather hitting you instead of you being absorbed. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it's good to, to come to, re, to listen to receive. Not to just see. So ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you here to listen to receive? Yeah, because see, it's amazing that somebody can come listen to all this and see the scriptural evidence and goes back to his place and he's still teaching the same thing. Because see, certain people have what they call, they have built an, a, a name. They have written books. They've built structures. So they just cannot receive what the Spirit is saying. Because what am I going to do to my books? What am I going to do to my names? But brothers and sisters, who is bigger? Jesus or you? If this is what Jesus is saying, who are you to stand on the way of Jesus? Go and ask the Apostle Paul. He was such a serious person that he persecuted the church for the, for the law. One day he carried his people to go and arrest the Christians. Jesus met him on the way. He joined them and started preaching the same message. He didn't say, oh, oh hi Paul, look at the work I've done. I cannot change. He, when he met Jesus, he started preaching that message. So are you better than Paul? How about Paul saying, oh, oh, if I preach this thing, what about the people I've killed and all that? Paul didn't say that. There was a mighty minister of God called Apollos. But all he knew was John's baptism. He was preaching passionate, everything. Then he met Priscilla and Aquila. And they expounded the gospel. The next sentence, he started preaching Christ. What did Apollo say? Oh, Charlie, I'm a big uh, minister. I've been preaching this. I can't know. The thing, it is not about a man. Hallelujah. It is about what the Holy Ghost is saying. So if you come and say, okay, this is what I know, but I'm here to listen. You see, you have the Holy Spirit in you. If what we are saying is true, you, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. So if the spirit bears witness with your spirit that this is true, what do you do with it? You just flow with it. Say, I flow. I flow. I flow. So if a church is having a program and it's going to be Christians, this is their program. I just came to listen. No, this is for the body of Christ. I said, this is for the body of Christ. So what you hear at the New Christian is not a, a, a message to a church called New Christian Fellowship or something. This is the message for the body of Christ. It's a dispensation. So if you're here, just receive. So I receive. So I receive. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. Wow, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That was another exciting excerpt of the 2019 New Christian Conference. And I'm glad uh, to have, once again, Pastor Ghani with me. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you so much, sir. And Pastor Faisal with me. Thank you, you're sir. welcome. Wow, this has also been awesome. And I can see that as we make progress in the week, the intensity of the presence of God in the discussions are increasing. Mm -hmm. And this is scriptural. The Bible says the path of a just man is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. brighter. And so wonderful people, if you have been watching from the beginning of the week, never stop and never stop in the coming weeks because as we go, we are increasing in the intensity of the spirit and your life will never be the same. You know, we started talking from the beginning of the week what the Holy Spirit said he was going to do in that NCC. We began by letting the people know that he said there was going to be power which being intelligent will meet many needs. Then number two, he started talking about three other things. The first one he mentioned was positioning us to know how to deal well in the body of Christ, maturing us. Then he talked about the game-changing key, talking about the ultimate goal of Jesus coming. Now we move to the third one that's talking about establishing us in the reality of the new creation message. And that is what we have to eat today. Mm -hmm. You know, I've come across a few people that 
once in a while preach what they call new creation and then they, it, it comes in and go out. But you look at their lives and their lives are inconsistent with the message. There are also others that have a challenge with the new creation message because they just think that it just doesn't sound human. It brings in things that look blasphemous. You know, it seems to be too high or it looks strange. And sometimes just amazed to think that somebody will see something in the scriptures and think that, I don't know what they think, or that maybe God wasn't serious in writing such a scripture or something and think that's a strange teaching, you know. Then there are also those that just don't get it because the thing is something else. Now, we're talking about the importance of being established in the reality of the message. Why is it important that a child of God become established in the message of the new creation, Pastor Ghani? Wow, thank you so much, sir. Mm. Wow. Um, with the various examples that you gave, mm. people who find the message strange mm. and others who have come to contact with the message mm. get excited, mm. but their lives is not very consistent mm -hmm. with the uh, new Christian message. Mm. Now, it is very important for us to, from the onset, to know that mm. they are not cleverly devised faith. Mm. The new Christian message is scriptural. <laughs> Every bit of it is in the Bible. Mm. Truths in the scriptures. Mm. Okay. And you mentioned that this is the message. Mm. This is the message required mm. to mature the church, to mm. ripen the church mm. for the rapture. Mm. And as a child of God, that is God's aim for you, goal for you mm. on this earth, mm. to mature mm. in maturity. Mm. And therefore, it is important for you to be Established in the new Christian mm. message. That's mm. why the certainty of it must be imparted to mm. your heart by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, recently I was sharing somewhere and I read the story of David and his encounter with Saul. When they were afraid of Goliath and David said he would go, then King Saul said, You cannot go. Then he said, Oh, don't be afraid, I'll go. Then King Saul said, The Lord be with you. <laughs> now, King Saul knew mm. that if the Lord is with somebody, the person will succeed. Mm. But why did he say, okay, now, David, you stop. Now, I've gotten the clue. I will go. The Lord be with me. You see, the Lord be with you was theoretical to him. Mm -hmm. It hadn't become reality imparted to his spirit. Mm -hmm. But David knew that the Lord be with him was real. So when the bear came, he chased it. Mm -hmm. When the lion came, he chased it. And he knew he was going to do the same thing to Goliath. There's a difference between knowing a biblical message in your head mm -hmm. and having its reality imparted. Mm -hmm. Becoming certain of the things in which you are instructed. Mm. Mm. And that is what, you know, there are some Christians who so, they believe in the new creation and they just talk loudly. I'm not sick. I'm not poor. I'm, but they are broke. Mm. They are sick and all that. It's because there's a difference between just shouting mm. the message and getting established in the reality. Mm. You know, that we mentioned, you mentioned something about, we said, this is the message. Throw some more light on that. Wow. Thank you so much mm. for this opportunity. So, like was said, it is not one of the messages that somebody has sat down mm. to put one or two together mm. to, you know, hoodwink people. Mm. No. This is the message mm. of God for now. now. Mm. In God's dealings with people, mm. at every time, mm. there is a particular message. Mm. In these times, mm. this is the this message of God. God for now. Mm. You know, John the Baptist came <laughs> and he says, the kingdom of God is coming. Mm. Jesus came, the kingdom of God mm. is here. Mm. When Peter and Coach took over, they said, repent and be mm. baptized for yeah, Jesus has died. They test out the resurrection. Paul came, grace. Mm. You know, so at every time, mm. there is a message. If you give birth to a child, mm. you feed him with liquids. Mm. Mm. When a person grows, you go semi-solid. Mm. Then you go to solid. solid. Then meat and bones. It's the same thing with mm. the church. Mm. So, the message of the new creation, I, I asked a question in that, that uh, teaching video that some may say, okay, you know, we have very structured church systems, mm -hmm. which uh, well, there are some of the things, okay, these are the old church systems mm -hmm. and they know the original theology mm -hmm. and they, the, what mm -hmm. they preach is the original message. Why were they not preaching this one? Mm -hmm. It's because when they started, it wasn't time. Mm -hmm. The church wasn't mature mm -hmm. for the message. Mm -hmm. But the church cannot remain at that same place. Mm -hmm. So wonderful viewers, mm. the message of the new creation. You, you, you seem like you didn't finish the point. You're <laughs> oh, so right. the so, I mean, I, the point I was making was that mm. why? Because mm. now the time for the rapture of the church mm. is near, mm -hmm. 
And Jesus <laughs> is coming for a glorious church. Mm. It will take this message mm. to mature the, the church. church. Mm. To mm. become that glorious mm. church Jesus is coming for. Mm. You know, when you say this in my heart again, you know, these days I just did my heart because I, I, I'm just looking at the body of Christ. Mm. Some people think that Jesus is just coming to take anything away. <laughs> <laughs> but the Bible defined mm. the church mm. he's coming, coming for. Mm. And he's mm. been working to get the church mm. there. Mm. He says he's washing the church mm. with the water of the way mm. for a reason. So if you are a child of God and you refuse to be washed, mm. He's not just coming for you just because mm. you are there. Because listen, when the, the church is caught up, that's not the end. Mm. People will be there mm. and they'll go through tribulation. So mm. if you are not part of the glorious church, no problem. That doesn't mean that you won't be in heaven. <laughs> if you can stand the Antichrist and the tribulation, you will still be in heaven. But if you refuse to be part of the glorious church, he's not going to bend. He says, if you don't believe, he will not mm. deny himself. Mm. As for him, he has mm. said it. <laughs> He said, if you are not faithful, he's, he will not be unfaithful to himself. Hmm. So this is serious that sons of God grow up to know that this is the message. message. And what makes it even a thing? Prove it in the word. Hmm. If what we are teaching is not in the word, throw it away. Hmm. If it is in the word, <laughs> go for it. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we also mentioned something about having the right attitude. In, you know, because of what we've been saying, there are some people, especially ministers, mm. and those who are a bit inclined in theology, who just come. Mm. And they are, instead of listening for the spirit to minister, they are listening for theological errors. Mm. Or, and when they say theological error, then it's not about that we are in error, but what does not, they don't agree with. And so they, they are listening, and then the green, red, mm. green, red in their minds. And we're talking about that attitude. I mean, you should come to NCC with a kind of attitude. Mm. What, what oh, thank you so much. Mm. You see, <laughs> Jesus spoke of the kingdom mm. and he said something mm. that the kingdom of God can be likened to little children. Mm. And why? Because little children just receive mm. what they are told. Mm. This is the word of God. Mm. Whose word do you want to receive? Mm. The attitude you must come with is an attitude not to come thinking like you shared that does this sound theologically mm. right in my own mm -hmm. understanding? Mm -hmm. In fact, that was what the Pharisees did mm. and missed what Jesus came mm. to do. Mm. Come with a willing heart, mm. ready to receive mm. from God. Mm. And that is always a starting mm. point because this was what the Spirit of God was doing in us. Mm. And there are testimonies of how people have been established in the reality of mm. this message. We enter 2020. Mm -hmm. Those who were established mm -hmm. in this message, mm -hmm. 2020 showed up. Mm -hmm. We are still in 2020 mm -hmm. now. And we can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. You see, so you must come <laughs> willing and ready to receive, mm -hmm. knowing that this is the Spirit of God ministering mm -hmm. to me. Oh, wow. If that is your heart, He will minister to mm -hmm. you. That's why He put out the conference anyway. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> to minister to you. So the only person that can prevent you from wow. receiving is yourself. So, you know, you, just before we round that, you made an important mm. point that I need to, we need to clarify that. Mm. You said that, you know, the kingdom is Jesus lacking the kingdom to children. Mm. So just be willing to receive mm. what you are told. That also has been dangerous mm. to some mm. people mm -hmm. because they don't read their own mm. Bible. Mm -hmm. They just go somewhere and they tell them anything mm. and they say, oh, I'm a child mm -hmm. and they receive all. <laughs> what would then be the difference mm. in this case? Mm. Well, thank you very much, sir. Mm. We have a teacher, mm -hmm. and that is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will guide you mm. into all oh, truth. Oh, truth. <laughs> so if you are listening, you, if you came to the, if you are really born again, mm -hmm. you are one with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you came to the conference mm. with the Holy Spirit, mm. as a child of mm. God, when you enter any place mm. and there's falsehood, you should mm. know. Mm. Because you have a father. Mm. That is the Holy mm. Spirit. Mm. And he will guide you into mm. all truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Wow. So the difference in this, when we are asking you to come to receive, mm. it's not like just come and then we throw anything for you to take. If you come into answer mm. with the Holy Spirit mm. and come with your Bible. Mm. So with the Holy Spirit and your mm. Bible, no person can deceive mm. you. But if you go to a place and so because they say we should receive mm -hmm. as children and it, 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 there's no Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. there's no Bible, you will receive something mm -hmm. that will kill you mm -hmm. instead of what should mm -hmm. be a blessing mm -hmm. to you. So wonderful viewers, NCC is coming mm -hmm. and you must be there, but you must come full of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Start praying days mm -hmm. ahead, mm -hmm. preparing your heart to receive mm -hmm. and come with your Bible mm -hmm. because so that you can see it in your mm, own mm, Bible mm, and see that, yes, mm. what is being shared is in your Bible. Mm. And then that can be 
what will help you to uh, be established in the reality of the message. Someone is watching us now. Help the person to receive Jesus. Oh, thank you so much, sir, for this okay. great opportunity. So, if you are listening or watching today, God's plan for you is to be born of him. Mm. This can only happen when you believe what the scriptures say, that Jesus died and was raised from the dead. If you can believe this and confess this Jesus as your Lord, immediately you'll be born again. Mm. The human life in your spirit will be expunged and you will receive God's life. Mm. If you're willing, I'd like to pray with you. Mm. Say these after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you today. I have heard your word. I believe that indeed you died and you were raised from the dead, that I might receive God's life into my spirit. Today, I confess you as my Lord and I receive your life into my spirit. Thank you that I am born again mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. If you did that with all your heart, having believed what was shared about Jesus, you are born again. Make sure you get planted in Bible teaching church and remain in him till he comes. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Faisal. Thank you so it's much. Such a blessing to you. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Gani. Thank you so such much. A bomb. Wow. 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 Wonderful. Wow. 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 Uh, NCC Hub, you are surely going to come your way again tomorrow with another dimension. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744. Or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.